Background. Storage systems are becoming ever more important for critical services in a variety of industries. Service interruptions in storage systems may cause the loss of critical data, leading to significant financial losses. This is especially true in the fields of communications, finance, medical care, e-commerce, logistics and government. Therefore, service continuity is critical to the construction of storage systems. In a typical disaster recovery system, a single production centre and a single disaster recovery centre are constructed. The disaster recovery centre is active only when the production centre breaks down. Such disaster recovery systems are faced with the following challenges. If the production centre encounters power supply failures, fires, floods or earthquakes, services must be switched from the production centre to the disaster recovery centre. This causes long service interruptions. The disaster recovery centre remains idle most of the time, reducing the efficiency of resource usage. To counteract these shortcomings, Huawei has developed Hypermetric. Working Principle Hypermetro enables storage arrays in two data centres to work concurrently and share service loads, providing you with a high availability data protection solution. The distance between the two data centres can be as far as 100 kilometres. The two data centres serve as backup for each other. If a device in one data centre malfunctions or the entire data centre breaks down, services are automatically switched to the other data centre. This working mode solves the problems of traditional disaster recovery centres. In addition to providing robust reliability and service continuity, Hypermetro also increases the efficiency of storage system resource use. Let's see how the I.O. processing mechanism of Hypermetro works. Write I.O. process. In the following example, a write I.O. is simultaneously written into a local storage array and a remote storage array, executing dual write. 1. A host delivers a write I.O. to the Hypermetro management module. 2. The management module records a log entry. 3. Hypermetro concurrently writes the write I.O. to both the local cache and remote cache. 4. The local cache and remote cache return the write I.O. result to Hypermetro. 5. Hypermetro returns the write I.O. result to the host after receiving feedback from the local cache and remote cache. 6. The storage arrays determine whether dual write succeeds. If the write I.O. request is processed successfully, the log entry is deleted. If the write I.O. fails to write to the local or remote cache, Hypermetro services are suspended and the storage array in each data center sends an arbitration request to the quorum server. The storage array that wins the arbitration continues providing services and the storage array that fails in the arbitration stops providing services. The working storage array uses the data change log, DCL, to synchronize data in the background. After the data on the local LUN is the same as that on the remote LUN, Hypermetro services are restored. Read I.O. process. Data on the LUNs in both storage arrays is synchronized in real time and can be accessed by hosts. A host delivers a read I.O. to the Hypermetro management module. Hypermetro enables the local storage array to respond to the read I.O. request of the host. Hypermetro reads data from the local storage array or remote storage array. If the local storage array is working properly, it returns data to Hypermetro. If the local storage array is not working properly, Hypermetro reads data from the remote storage array. Once Hypermetro returns data to the host, the read I.O. is processed successfully. If the data of one storage array is abnormal, Hypermetro uses the data on the other storage array to repair the abnormal data, ensuring data consistency between the two data centers. Arbitration mechanism of Hypermetro. To ensure data consistency, Hypermetro uses an arbitration mechanism to determine the priorities of services in different data centers. Hypermetro supports two arbitration modes, 
Static Priority Mode and Quorum Server Mode. Let's look at these two modes now. In both of the following examples, Data Center A is the preferred site and Data Center B is the non-preferred site. Static Priority Mode. This mode is used in scenarios where no third site quorum server is deployed. If the link between the storage arrays in Data Center A and Data Center B goes down, the storage array in Data Center A continues providing services, but the storage array in Data Center B stops providing services. If the storage array in Data Center B malfunctions, the storage array in Data Center A continues providing services, but the storage array in Data Center B stops providing services. If the storage array in Data Center A malfunctions, the storage array in Data Center A enters the invalid state, and the storage array in Data Center B stops providing services. You must start the storage array in Data Center B to enable the storage array to provide services for hosts. Quorum Server Mode This mode is used in scenarios where a third site quorum server is deployed. If the quorum server breaks down, the storage arrays in both Data Center A and Data Center B continue providing services. If the link between a storage array and the quorum server goes down, the storage arrays in both Data Center A and Data Center B continue providing services. If the storage array in Data Center A breaks down, the storage array in Data Center A enters the invalid state, but the storage array in Data Center B continues providing services. If the link between the storage arrays in data centers A and B breaks down, arbitration result 1. The storage array in data center A continues providing services, but the storage array in data center B enters the invalid state. Arbitration result 2. The storage array in data center B continues providing services, but the storage array in data center A enters the invalid state. As the preferred site, Data Center A has arbitration priority. Arbitration result 1 is therefore the most common result. If the storage array in Data Center A and the quorum server simultaneously break down, the storage array in Data Center A enters the invalid state and the storage array in Data Center B stops providing services. You must start the storage array in Data Center B to enable the storage array to provide services for hosts. If the link between a storage array and peer storage array is down, and the link between the storage array and quorum server is also down, the storage array in data center A stops providing services, but the storage array in data center B continues providing services. If the storage array in data center A breaks down and the link between the storage array in data center B and the quorum server is down, the storage array in data center A enters the invalid state and the storage array in data center B stops providing services. You must start the storage array in data center B to enable the storage array to provide services for hosts. If the quorum server malfunctions and the link between the storage arrays in data centers A and B is down, arbitration result 1. The storage array in data center A continues providing services but the storage array in data center B stops providing services. This arbitration result is chosen if the interval between the two faults exceeds 20 seconds. Arbitration result two. The storage arrays in both data centers A and B stop providing services. This arbitration result is chosen if the interval between the two faults is within 20 seconds. If the quorum server malfunctions and the link between the quorum server and the storage array is down, the storage arrays in both data center A and data center B continue providing services.